Larry, the chance of our kids enjoying the standard of living we had, if we don't own this next great global industry, ET, the way we own IT, information technology, uh, I, I would say it's about zero. How do we get it this fix? How do we get it this fix? Well, because um, year after year, we never put in place, Larry, the price signals we needed. A gasoline tax, a carbon tax, that would stimulate the innovation around this industry. And that's where the problems of the auto industry that we were just talking about meet the oppression of the energy technology industry. All, all the countries that are leading this industry, Larry, they have in common, whether it's Japan or Denmark, is they put in the price signals. They've given a long-term fixed durable price signal. I was just in Houston today. I saw gas at $1.77 a gallon. That's going to kill the wind, solar, and cellulose and ethanol industry unless the next administration is ready to put a price signal. Let's say all your ideas are put in place. What are we going to look like? What we look like, what we look like in 20 years, we have something I call in the book where the energy internet. Um, it's when IT meets ET. Um, we have a lot of clean generation of electrons going into a smart grid, going into a smart home where all your appliances are basically, they trade automatically for electrons for you, fed into a smart car that would be charged at night with electricity and drive 100 miles on electricity and never have to fill up with gasoline. That's what it would look like. I know it sounds like science fiction, don't fetch it too far, though. All these technologies exist today, Larry. They just don't exist at the speed, scope, and scale we do. Well, well, Red China become, you give a lot of attention to China in your book, uh, because they're the largest. Will Red China become Green China?